Hello, our lovers. Welcome back for another video. Here, I will show you a really simple painting of an apple using the idea what I was uh, mentioning about earlier. So, in the beginning, I use really thin paint, really thin. An apple just like that. And f quickly finding my shadow. Just put in some thinner paint, as you can see. There are, there's more medium on the canvas right now. And quickly, I'm going to add a little bit more tone into it, add a little bit more paint on the dark side, give it a little more color. And as you can see, my movement, which is not repeating, repeatedly painting at the same areas for too many times. So that is one of the key that my color will remain fresher. Okay, so after that, I will just go, I will just go ahead and paint on the light side. As I said, this is, is going to be a really quick and simple demo. Put in quite a lot of paint actually. Some people not uh, willing to put in this much paint at the beginning, but uh, the paint itself, if you have enough, it allows you to maneuver around. If you don't have enough paint, it will not become smooth on the surface to have better transitions of the color. also the pressure. The amount of pressure that you have on your brush, this has to be something that you, you have to learn it by yourself and how much pressure you need to uh, press down on your brush. That's, that is really your own experience. I cannot really teach you that. So you basically have to go through this kind of an experiment and figure it out, how much pressure that you need to put on your brush and transferring the color onto the subject. So pretty much like I can talk all day saying that uh, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, but Overall, you are the one who needs to experience it, so. I'm just showing you how the color will not be mixed all together, become muddy. And this exercise, I'm not gonna do too, um, Define with the subject would be a quickie, okay? Just a quickie. So 
Uh, so I don't mind the paint outside the area too. A lot of times people just paint within the area, carefully map things in, and carefully paint around the, the subject. To me, I don't mind the paint outside, and I can always come back and retouch the area. So. As you can see now, so far, I haven't done all the dapping on top, right? My brush strokes is pretty much consistently moving. Even going back to the similar area, but it's not with the uh, really short distance of uh, movement. The movement would always be more kind of uh, following the structure and and the value and color appears to support my movement. So as you can see now, my color is, star is starting to mix a little. What can I do at this moment? The color look a little bit uh, dimmer, which is fine. I can always come back and put another tone on top, just like that. Now, still under control. As I said, I don't mind doing paint those uh, area, which is uh, get out of the. Uh, the uh, mapping area. I don't mind that. I can always come back and refine it with the background. The background to me is more like an eraser in painting. A helpful, really helpful tip. So As I said, this demo is mainly to show you the color, how the color actually can appear without being being muddy. So I load up enough color on top, just go on top a few times. Once I, I feel the color is mixing well and also the edges comes along with nicely, and comes along with um, the structure nicely, then I pretty much will stop at that uh, area and continue with elsewhere. So that way, I can be more uh, surely that the area will not be too much mixing uh, with the color and also with the brush strokes. So, as you can see now, Apple is coming. It's coming along. The more paint you put on top, the easier for the color to mix. So if you don't have enough paint on top of the subject, actually it's harder for you to make the color uh, more rich and also more pure. Okay, so as you can see, what I have done so far, and next thing I need to do, which is I'm going to paint the background, give it a little more neutral color, since the, the foreground element is quite red, I'm just going to neutralize it. And of course, by doing that, I need to add a certain amount of um, the medium, such as the linseed oil I'm using. Okay, we find linseed oil, that's what it is. Now I'm going to go ahead, paint around that area. And along with the brush 
control what I mentioned last time and the way that how the brush can work. Last time I was talking about the brushes, this time I'm talking about the paint application, not to get muddy color. See, even I paint the same area, but I'm not dapping like this. Do you see that? I'm not dapping like that. Push in, I push my paint in actually. See, as I said, the background is more like an eraser to me. Almost there. Okay, so pretty much I've cleaned up the area. As I said, even I go through the same area, my stroke is long. Much longer than some of the people doing this. This will make your uh, paint go thinner, less fat on top. That means it will be easier for your color to get to get uh, muddy. So um, not just adding more linseed oil. Oil will make your painting go better. But I'm talking about the pigment itself. Okay, not just adding oil, uh, linseed oil, and then hopefully in that. The color will not become muddy. It will also become muddy if you don't have enough pigments, okay, N enough colors. Once again, this is a really quick demo showing you the idea of how the color can stay fresh, not being muddy but then again even muddy color if you can utilize them well they can also serve you uh, kind of a in a good way but of course you need more experience to make things work okay uh, in a dark area I can also go in and find out a little bit more and pretty much and I can almost call this is done right as I said this is a, a quick one really quick one so let's add a little more darker tone and finalize it quickly
more fat is adding into the subject. As I said, more fat, easier to render. So some people, they are afraid to put paints on top of the canvas. And also sometimes some people think the, uh, the paints are expensive. Uh, they don't want to use too much. But in this case, your painting is going to suffer. Right? If you don't have the, uh, have the confidence, have the guts to use a paint, how can your paint serve you? Just like a chef worrying about using the knife and using the, the knife to cut the, the, um, the food, then the result would be different, right? So the same. The same as painting. So pretty much this is done. Let me soften up the edge a little. A really quick one, as I said. And the stump. Let me finalize this area and then we can call this is a finish for a quick painting. This is a shadow and now I'm painting the stamp. Okay, almost there. See, by adding more paint on top, the color can stay and also by not moving around that many times, the color can be more pure. And on the other side, The highlight. And what one last thing to do is define this this brush mark a little. Okay, so here it is. A simple, really simple uh, demo 
of how the uh, the brushwork can do. Um, or maybe I can add a little more for the reflected light. To show you that actually I can change color just like that. See? By adding color one time. And let me bring it up a little bit more brighter. If I do one or more time, as you can see, the value changed. So Okay, uh, I'm going to do more, a little bit more. Press down. If I don't want the color to be mixed too much, press down a little more. I'm trying to find a mutual ground for these two planes. I'm going to unify them and then modify them. Thus, will be easier. There we go. Right, as I said, when I'm doing this, the length of my brush mark is not too short, cannot be too short. Give it a little more enhancement with the reflected light. Okay, so this is it. A quick demo how the color not be become muddy. Hopefully it helps you. If you like the video, please click like, subscribe, and share with your friends. See you next time. Bye.